Good evening, everyone, from the campus of San Lorenzo Valley High School. This is Community TV Sports with a special presentation of the 2012-2013 SCCAL Wrestling Finals. Tonight, the wrestlers from Aptos, Harbor, Scotts Valley, Soquel, Santa Cruz, and San Lorenzo Valley all square off to see who will be the best in their weight class. I am Pat Level along with I'm not Pat Level. I'm with <laughs> Pat Level. I'm Kurt Edwards along with Pat Level. I wish I was Pat Level. I'd be an Olympic wrestler at one point in time. Right now out in front of us is Ken Palestrini, and he's going to introduce some of the former champions in the SCCAL, so I'll let him go for a little bit. He's the head coach for Aptos High School, and Pat, he's been there for 15 years, and that program is just, I mean, that's the Cadillac program for everybody here at the SCCAL. Yeah, it certainly is, uh, Kurt. You know, Reggie has taken that program uh, since he's been the head coach and just turned it upside down. He, his turnout is two to three times as many wrestlers as any other school in the league. Uh, they have by far the best uh, thing now. They have a new facility, which really helps out. A brand new wrestling room, new mats and everything. And that new gymnasium and, and uh, auditorium they have there, the, the, uh, you know, the studio that they have there is just absolutely beautiful. And so that encourages kids too when you have new stuff and, and uh, the kids look forward to going to practice there. And everything. So it's, it's really, uh, really a great deal. He has done wonderful. I remember from my coaching days there, the wrestling room and the weight room were the same room, and it was a closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember? That you have the one uh, universal gym with the four sides on it. You got to move that monster out of the way. Roll the mats up every night, put them out. Now they don't do that anymore. The mats are out all the time on the floor, and uh, you know that, that sure makes it a lot easier. I used to say to my kids when I was coaching wrestling, and I'm sure it happens today, I'd say to the kids, okay, I gotta roll these mats up, give me a hand, and they'd start clapping. <laughs> I don't think that's changed, but we are introducing the coaches of the various. We already met Reggie. Ken Palestrini is center stage right now. He's the San Lorenzo Valley head coach. Brandon Gwynn from Harbor doing a fantastic job. Shane Torres is the head man for Soquel. And Jared Norman, he coordinates Scotts Valley, who probably has the second biggest team uh -huh. here in the SCCAL. And one of the things that's really cool about this SCCAL program, Pat, is that it rotates around from school to school to school. Yeah. Every year, that's, that's the thing. We, it was funny, a couple years ago, we, they said, you know, rather than saying who wants to do it, Let's just assign it to everyone so you'll have the championship once every five years, you know, in the rotation. And so it's really worked out well because what happens is, is you, um, the, whoever does the novice tournament, you do the novice tournament at the beginning of the season. And then what happens is then you have the, the responsibility of the, you know, of the varsity tournament also. So you get that big egg, uh -huh. you know, twice you get... You're going to get to make money off the concession stands at both events and so forth. So it's a fundraiser also for for the for the schools that ha that host that. You know. Right. Here come our wrestlers. We will see 28 
wrestlers out here on the mats tonight, starting in the 108 class, going all the way down to the Big Brahmas in the 287 pound weight class. They're gonna get an opportunity to introduce each other. A quick little thanks, if I may, to the various sponsors who are making this telecast possible. Dan Whiting's and Whiting's Food, 613 B Street down in Santa Cruz, that would be known as the Boardwalk. Steve Rebataro from Performance Food, also known as Ledger, on 17th Avenue. Matt Young on Polar Bear Ice Cream, 389 Corral's Coral Street in Santa Cruz. The first one, Jason Silva from SLV and Ian Elsie from Aptos. They will be wrestling in the 108 class. In the 115 class, we had... We will have, where's Ian? Is Ian gonna take the mat? I guess they both did. I've got the mat, wrestlers facing me. In the 115 class, Jed Kraft from San Lorenzo Valley and Gio Zachariah from Aptos. Moving up a couple of pounds to the 122 class, Ramon. Well, okay, Michael Sandoval from Scotts Valley and Ramon Zacharias from Aptos. Aptos will be a repeating theme throughout this entire wrestling match, I have a feeling. 128. Sonny Torres from Soquel. And Kevin Eddington from Scotts Valley. That's your 128 class. Moving up to 134. From Aptos, Miguel Barraco. And Willie LaMancha from Harbor High School. 140. Scotts Valley, Nick Reyes. This is one bout, Pat, that I'm gonna look forward to. And Miller Clark out of Aptos High. That should be a real good one. From 147, Kristen Leonetti and Mike Kraft from San Lorenzo Valley. What a wrestling family the Kraft is. They certainly have. They've been doing a great job over the years. Doug Pryors from 154 from Scotts Valley and Brian Batisto. Also 154 from Harbor High School. Moving up the weight, 162. Andy Ramirez from Scotts Valley. And then Austin Verdugo from Aptos High School. Getting ready to introduce the 172 pounders. Mitch Gehring from Aptos High School. And Jeremiah Jurado from SLV. 184, getting bigger. Nick DeMauro from Aptos High School. And Baldwin DeShiv from, S, excuse me, from Scotts Valley. 197. Colin McKenzie from Harbor High School. And Kurt Lamberin from SLV. Going up 122. This is another going to be a good one. Alex Bonsell from Aptos. And Dakota Francis from Harbor High. These two guys met on the line of scrimmage during the football season. They certainly did. <laughs> Alan Moreno from Harbor, 287 pounds, and Alex Marquez from Aptos. Those are your 28 wrestlers that we're going to see tonight, and we'll have to take a brief timeout as we get ready for our national anthem as the crowd recognizes these 28 stellar athletes. Because I'll tell you one thing. Pat knows this better than I do. You can't hide on the mat. That's for sure, you know. It's, uh, you know, they say that the saying in the wrestling community is, once you've wrestled, everything else in life is easy. So we'll find out tonight. <laughs> As the crowd starts to rise for the singing 
What do we of, do? What do of we do? Our natural, but we get to sit here. Okay. We get to relax. tradition of the national anthem probably the toughest song in the world I think to sing another quick little for these sponsors Kathy Wiley from desperately seeking chocolate dessert sauces that's my kind of place right there desperately seeking chocolate dessert sauces find them on the web at dschocolate.com Winchester Auto Parts Scotts Valley that's Terry Heshert and they are at 214 Mount Hermon Road in Scotts Valley. Need a part for your car, truck, van, running or not? Winchester Auto Parts, they've got it. Cafe El Palomar at 2222 East Cliff Drive, Santa Cruz. Great food, great drinks, great location. Cafe El Palomar down on East Cliff Drive. KP Constructions, Ken Palestrini, the owner. Fantastic construction, tremendous experience in the valley and around. Todd Craft and the Family Craft Auto Body Shop, 6100 SoCal Avenue. If you've got a ding, a dent, something out of alignment, you can go to Craft Auto Body Shop. They will fix it for you. And, of course, the San Lorenzo Valley High School Athletic Boosters. We are ready to go with the 108. Jason Silva, he is in the... Singlet that has the red on it from San Lorenzo Valley. In the dark blue is Ian Elsie. Jason has the red anklet on. Ian has the green anklet on. We are going first two minute round. Silva, just a freshman out of SLV. Yeah, uh, he was, uh, Silva was a, was a fourth placer at the Webb Lawson tournament, which is a pretty tough tournament over at Fresno. I mean, excuse me, over at Fremont High School in Sunnyvale. A couple of quick little guys out there. He is coached by uh, Todd Kraft, Ken Palestrini, and Jesse Mason. And uh, he has a lot of great aspirations as a young man. Ian Elsie from Aptos is 26 and 13 on the season. And uh, he likes to play soccer and golf. His coaches are <laughs> Reggie Roberts, Rudy Guzman, and John Velez. He's got, both of these guys come from good programs and good coaches, Pat. Looks like they're just trying, those evenly matches, and you're right, they're quick. What are they, what are they trying to do? I know they're trying to figure out how to get in for an attack. Well, it looks like Elsie try, is trying to hit that takedown with a double and single leg. Oh, he got caught with a headlock there by Silva. Silva caught him in that headlock. He got extended a little bit too far. Silva was able to put that headlock on and whip him, whip him right over. Silva with two points on that one. Now four for Silva. And it'll be a three-point near fall. So he's up five zip now. That's, that's a good lead to have to start off with. How can Ian get out of this one, Pat? Well, the thing is, 
you know, he extended himself a little bit too much and put himself in a bad position on his shot. He didn't he didn't set it quite right, and he let his head come up there. And, and of course, uh, Jason Silva was smart enough to, to take advantage of that. Silva up 5-0, and he is on the top. And I just noticed that Ian works really quickly. He's going to try and spread himself out. And Pat, by doing that, uh, how does that help him? If he can keep himself spread out, that is. Yeah. Well, what he's what he has to do now, he's. You notice that that Jason Silva's working for that. What they call the cowboy here, but he didn't quite get it. Out of bounds. Thought he had a one-point escape, but I guess not. He still had him under control. So. Elsie's, Elsie's got to fire up out of there, get that one-point escape or get that reversal. So he's got to make that first move every time. Very important. Eight seconds to go here in just the first round of the first bout. And it's horn goes. Jason Silva's on top right now as far as points is concerned. Five to nothing. The flip of the coin. It's going to be red. Silva says he's going to defer. And Ian says... Go to the neutral position. Watch out for the headlock. <laughs> Here they come, both swatting at each other. Look like two guys swatting flies there for a second. Yeah, they they really, uh, I, I think, really pr pretty pretty evenly pretty evenly matched. Uh, something wrong with our clock here, I think. They didn't get that thing started on time, so they're they'll wind off a couple of seconds to where the referees feel it's capable. So it's at 151. Yeah. We start it again. Each round is two minutes here in high school wrestling. Elsie trying to work on that, work on that head and set that. Take a, there go, get caught again. He got extended. It, Elsie El, El, was able to flip around out of it that time. That was a great move by Elsie. Two points for Elsie. Five to two in favor of Silva. Elsie stays on top. Silva right now trying to figure out how to get out of it. Elsie saying no. You see, Silva tried to tried to uh, roll him on that. He hooked his arm and tried to roll off the bottom, but Elsie was quick enough to get his base back and not uh, not get taken over. Silva almost stands up. Quick question, Pat, on the out of bounds. We'll notice that the wrestlers just get outside the red circle. Boom, they get called for it. Sometimes it, they see him way out in you know way outside the circle. It, yeah. It all depends on the foot, the foot position. The referee will look at their foot position. The position that we saw on the line was both of them had a foot out of bounds. If one of them had both feet in, the other one had one foot out, they're still considered inbound. Okay. But the way they were, it was two feet out, one of each wrestler, and uh, they're out of bounds on that. Inside a minute to go, and yep. Elsie is just cranking on that head, putting that forearm pressure right on Silva's neck. Yeah, he's working, working up bar half now. He's got... Great pressure on that, and he's got to keep cranking it. Oh, he's got to get him over. Oh, he he's, got him over with that. Elsie already pinned him. So Elsie with a brilliant tactical move. Pin Silva with 39 seconds to go in the second round. Victory for Aptos. So that's your 108, which was Jason Silva in the green anklet against Ian. Elsie of Aptos. Elsie walks away with the pin, making more points for Aptos High School, who entered into this final round on top of the team points, 165 points. You know, that's a great comeback. When you're down 5-0 like that, you know, he he, uh, he just kept, you know, Elsie just kept coming. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't about to, to, you know, be complacent about his position there. Here come the 115, Jed Kraft, San Lorenzo Valley High School. He's in the red anklet against Gio Zacharias. He is in the green anklet, dark jersey with the A, the block A for the Aptos Mariners. Ready to go, first of the two minute rounds. Okay, Zacharias is the defending champion at 113 pounds from 2012. And uh, he's the, one of the top eight guys in the CCS. Nice move. Nice move there by yep. Jed Kraft. That was a nice little throw he had on that. Two points for Kraft. And he is going to try and pull that arm back and definitely keep hold of Zacharias yeah. as best he can. He, he is one of the bright, bright spot freshmen uh, in this league, I'll tell you right now. You know, when you got two brothers that have wrestled and been real successful, his other brother wins tonight. 
will end up being a four-time league champion, and that doesn't happen very often. Here he's got his crossbody right. He's trying to trying to work that guillotine on him, but he can't quite get the arm over. He's got the left side leg vine. He's working underneath the arms, trying to trying to get Zachariah down down flat on his base. That way he can work that work the arm over and put him in that guillotine position. Inside a minute to go, referee's timeout because neither wrestler was really going anywhere on yeah. that one. Yeah, so what the rest, that's called a stalemate in that position where nobody's making any progress. You'll see the referee give the double fist. That means it's, it's a, yeah, it, that's a stalemate and uh, they'll restart him. They're going to restart. Kraft on top, Zacharias on the bottom. Zacharias tries to spin around quick. Good job by Kraft to try and get hold of the ankle and stay on top. Yeah, he tried that first quick move on the switch, but it didn't quite work for him. There he goes again in the sit position, trying to get his arm free. Oh, here goes Kraft with a with a stack. With a, oh, a nice nice move here for a near fall. Really, real nice roll through on that. Takes the arm across the waist and he just rolls across his own back. That's a tough one to defend because you have no uh, nothing you can put out on either side to stop him from doing it. Inside, 20 seconds to go in the first round. Kraft trying to maintain control. Zacharias trying to get an escape. Four nothing in favor of Kraft at this point in time. 10 seconds to go. Kraft desperately hanging on so he doesn't lose any points for yeah. Zacharias getting an escape. Yeah. What 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 Kraft what Kraft tried to do was was take him. Off his base there with a throw, and, and uh, Zachariah was able to get his feet up underneath him. Looked like he was going to escape, but Kraft, smart enough, he held on to him and not didn't give up a point on that. Ken Palestrini, who's the coach for Kraft for San Lorenzo Valley High School, timeout is going to mop up the mat here very briefly. And again, Pat, these guys have seen each other. They've done the dual meets. They've probably seen each other in the Weber or the Coast Classic. Advantage, disadvantage, you know, when you get to see your opponent a couple different times. Yeah, it, it's it's really tough to to find out, you know, what tournaments they went to on some of the listings that we have here. We see that, that uh, Zacharias went to some good tournaments, the Ponderosa tournament. He got third there. He got second at the Webb Lawson tournament and eighth at, eighth at the Coast Classic. Uh, both of the both these guys are ranked. Zacharias ranked seventh in CCS, and uh, Jed Kraft is ranked uh, number 18. So there's a there's a big uh, big difference there with a freshman. But I'll tell you, he's doing a heck of a job for a freshman. Oh, we got a little blood on the mat again. We got a bloody nose by Jed Kraft. So they're trying to plug it up as best they possibly can. You know, uh, Kurt, looking at the records of the two wrestlers, you know, you have Ramon Zacharias is 28 and 9 on the season, and uh, Jed Kraft is 20 and 14. So, uh, you know, there's a big difference in a five match win compared to, to the two wrestlers. One has five win wins more than the other one. And uh, it, it, it's just, uh, you know, you got a freshman that, that's coming along and he's getting better every single match and mm -hmm. he's finding out what high school wrestling's about and it can make a tremendous, tremendous difference. Well, we think we've got that. Now, with all the cotton swabs or whatever else you get stuffed up your nose, how much does that impede you as far as the wrestler is <laughs> concerned? It all depends if you're a heavy breather or not. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a light breather, it's not a problem, but... You learn to breathe through your mouth when you can't breathe through your nose. Okay, you better learn really quick. Yeah. Uh, we got the timeout right now. They're in the second period, 144 to go in the second period. Judd Kraft from San Lorenzo Valley is on top, four to nothing. He is in the singlet, the black and red and white singlet for the Cougars from San Lorenzo Valley. In the black singlet from Aptos, again, is Gio Zacharias. The more experienced wrestlers, but right now, young Mr. Kraft is doing a good job of holding his own. Yeah, he certainly is. Uh, he, he's really doing a good job. And you can see he has the red ankle on, and Zachariah has the green ankle on. So here they come again. Kraft immediately goes for the ankle and control, loses it for a moment. 
Now he's got hold of the wrist. So important to get hold of control yeah. of either the wrist or the ankle. Yeah. Uh, either way to stop his momentum from getting out of there. What he's doing now, he's got a double wrist ride on him. What he's probably going to try and do is try that roll through again to turn him. Here he goes. If he can tie it up and uh, Zachariah does not, does not work his hands very well, then he's, he'll be able to roll through with that. But when the guy's fighting your hands, you don't quite have the grip. It's hard to do. Here he goes now for a cheap kill. Now he's in a bad position now. But I tell you, for a freshman to come out of that position right there is really difficult. They're both going after each other. Lake control right now is held by, looks like Kraft. Yeah, he's got the vine, vine in there. Now he's working for the guillotine. Here he goes, he's got him. He's got, he's that got him in the guillotine. He came with it. No. Near fall points and he, he uh, couldn't quite hold the arm. He goes right back to it. Right back to it. There he goes. Got him in trouble. Here's yeah. your count. Oh. Oh. Nice by Zachariah. There's yeah. a reversal. And now Zachariah's got Kraft in trouble. Oh, my. coming back. Oh. Eight to two in favor of Kraft. These two guys are great. 20 seconds to go. We're only in the second round. 16 seconds to go. Tremendous pressure on Kraft's neck. Boy, he does his... Circling by... Zacharias to get out of that one with yeah. seven point set, four seconds to go. 10 4 in favor of Kraft at this point in time in the second round, but that was exciting wrestling. That was, that was a great. That's what will stir the crowd up, I'll tell you that. That's some great, great wrestling. Well, momentary timeout again. Ken Pellestrini and the referee going over to the scorer's bench. So much of that right there was about balance, you know. He, it, you know, you lose just that little edge, you lose that balance, and you can get yourself into big trouble. But he was able to power back out of it. That was that was great. We had every match like that. Wrestling be so exciting that <laughs> every, everybody wanted every, to do everybody it. Everybody wanted to do it. Yeah. Well, there was a time back here in the in the Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League that these teams were maybe not as full as the Aptos team is, but definitely like such as Scotts Valley with about 30 kids on the team, plus their women's division that they have in there. So they're both gonna, they're gonna go from the neutral position with seven seconds to go. Both going for the head. Oh! Zachariah gets Kraft on it, but before he could do anything. Yeah, I think he hurt Kraft on that. Kraft came down right on his head, right straight down on his head. That didn't look very good. It was a nice, nice, you know, legal throw by Zacharias, but the way he came down, he came came right down on his on his head. His head was bent. Quickly out come the trainers and the coaches. Out there, Reggie Roberts, also the head man from Aptos. Ken Pellestrini, the head man for the San Lorenzo Valley. Todd Kraft, father. Yeah. Uh, Jed Kraft is also out there. Beth Kraft, who is the team mom for San Lorenzo Valley. Team moms are something that these these yeah. schools just, they just mean the world of. Yeah, this is one of the things you don't want to see. You know, it it happens in all sports from time to time, but you hate to have it happen to a young, a young, you know, ninth grade student in school. You know, it's just it's not a good thing. Still down on the map moving, which is the good part. But I don't know if we're going to be able to see Jed come back. I hope he does. But all for safety. We'll see. Back up. One, one tough cookie. Yeah, that was quite a throw. That, that's one of the best uh, headlock throws I've seen. You know, that's, that's what you see a good judo guy do, you know. So Zacharias, when we get ready for the third period, two minutes in the third period to go. Zacharias on the bottom. 12-9 is the score in favor of Kraft. Almost a, a quick move by Zacharias to almost get out. Kraft holding tight. I have a feeling he doesn't want to get in the headlock again. Yeah. Kraft. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna stay back. I you know he may try that guillotine again. I, I think I'd be leery of that at this point in time with only a three-point difference. You know, he can ride him ride him here. He, he can there's Zachariah trying to pull it, do an arm roll on him here. He can't quite get enough elevation on his leg. You see him trying to elevate. Yep. 
And he got it over the Don't top know. that time, but Kraft was able to yeah, get him back on his back yeah. and in trouble. See, that's the one thing you don't want to do. If he doesn't go over, you cannot step up like that. Yeah, oh. Zachariah with a two-point reversal. 12-11 in favor, still, of Kraft. Kraft just warned for stalling on the bottom. Zachariah's either got to turn him or cut him. He's got to either turn him or cut him, one or the other. Looks like Zachariah's got him in a half Nelson. Yeah, he's got. He's trying to get that arm bar. He's cranking on that arm a little bit too high. 50 seconds to go. Kraft up by one. Zachariah needs two more points. Kraft needs to figure out how to get out of this mess. Zachariah trying to circle in behind Kraft. Oh, he's got the cradle. Watch out now. He's got him on he the He put cradle. himself into that position. Zachariah has taken from here. He's got a great position. 30 Kraft. seconds to go. Kraft's able to fight out of that. 26 seconds to go. Whistle yeah. again. Nosebleed. They're going to have to stop the match to plug up that runny nose. Yeah. This is an exciting match, folks. Both of these young men at 115 pounds. Kraft, just a freshman. Zacharias with much more experience on the young man. At least I think he does. He's <laughs> <laughs> You know, at this lightweight, I can't tell whether they're both freshmen or well, Zacharias may have a Zachar little bit more. Zachariah is a junior. Okay. And Kraft is a freshman, you know. And, and most of the time, if you got two good wrestlers, that's kind of a mismatch. Yeah. But this is one tough freshman. I've watched him wrestle throughout the, throughout the season, Pat. There isn't any quitting this young man. We have 20 seconds to go in the third and final period. Unless, of course, there's a tie. Yeah which we will have a wrestle-off. First one to score wins. So Kraft, I'm assuming, will be on the bottom as they continue to clean up the mat. <laughs> Kraft is on top by one point, 12 to 11. Quick thank you for Dan Whiting and Whiting's Foods. 613 Beach Street, Santa Cruz, down by the boardwalk for their great sponsorship of this telecast. As we watch him get ready to go, also, Polar Bear Ice Cream and Mary Young from the neutral position. The clock is going. Kraft trying to not get into himself in trouble. Zacharias Kraft, knows he needs Kraft, something. Kraft got to be careful. He just got called for stalling. The match is now tied up. 13. Kraft takes Zachariah down. No points scored. Zacharias now has Kraft in trouble. Three, two, one. What are we going to do? It is over. Aptos comes out on top. The score on the board says 17 for Aptos. 13 for Jed Kraft in San Lorenzo Valley. What a great six <laughs> minutes of wrestling. So, that, was a, that was a standing ovation right there, I tell you. For both of those wrestlers, a huge contingent from Aptos. The Aptos wrestling team has not left. Yeah. <laughs> They're all over there, and they yeah. went nuts. So yeah. Jed Kraft got out on top of this, found himself maybe tired. Maybe also that nosebleed was bothering him, but that last 26 seconds, Zacharias, the junior, showed his experience as he was able to outpoint his opponent, 17-13. Here comes the 122s. Scotts Valley, Michael Sandoval. He is in the green anklet. And in the red anklet, Ramon Zacharias in the red anklet. We are starting first of the two-minute bouts. Both dark uniforms. Aptos, of course, has the block A. Ramon quickly goes to the ankle grab and gets control. Gains two points. Okay, Ramon Zacharias is 11th grader and... Uh... Michael Sandoval from Scotts Valley. They don't. I don't know what year he is. They don't have it down there for him. But uh, Sandoval is 15 and 10 on the season, and Ramon Zacharias is 28 and 9. So uh, big, big difference there in uh, in the amount of matches won. Nothing much going on right now. 112 to go. Zacharias on point, on top by two points. Sandoval on the bottom right now, trying to work his way out as best he can. Again, Zacharias with the red anklet. He'd be almost able to step out of it. 
was Sandoval, but he gets out of bounds with 57 seconds to go here in the first round. Sandoval going to be in the down position. Hands have to be on one of the lines, or the pot, heel of your hands. Yeah. And your knees, front of your knees, on the other one. There's the whistle. Sandoval almost steps out of it. Great ankle ride by Zacharias. Yeah, you got that near ankle ride, take him down, that far ankle ride, I should say, and break down the near arm and grab that far ankle and push him down the mat. I was, sorry, I was fouled up on that last match. I had the brothers, the Zacharias boys, uh, in different weight classes. <laughs> oh. So I had the wrong one. I kept calling uh, Gio, I kept calling him Ramon. So working for the tilt there, that, that, that uh, double wrist ride, then try to turn him with that tilt. Four points for Ramon Zacharias. And Sandoval's wrestling in the dark as his uh, headgear is now down around his eyes. But you can wrestle in the dark. All you have to do is feel where your opponent <laughs> is and react from there. Nine seconds to go. Zacharias riding right on the top of Sandoval, trying to get him over. Zacharias on top. Six to nothing as we come to the end of the first two minutes. Yeah, he works that arm real well to try, you know, that double wrist ride and then pulls him over for the cheap tilt. And uh, he does a great job of that, of rolling his hips and bringing him into that position, into a scoring position for the near fall. Going to go from a neutral position. Another two minutes, ready to go. Both trying to go for the head. San Sandoval going for a little bit of a shot, but not there. Pat, what do you, when you're trying to go for that takedown or for the ankle, what are you looking for for making that shot? Well, the thing is you don't, you, you want to make sure that when you do it, you're in a control position. You're not too far extended. You're not too far extended. You're just the right position. Now, right there, he tried a high crotch, high crotch move, and the, the defender uh, did not react properly to, to the shot and ended up getting taken down. Then he took a hard cross face on that, uh, when uh, Zachariah moved up on top of him, uh, Sandoval took a hard cross face, and you get a couple of those, and you think, hey, what's this guy doing to me here? Getting pounded on. Zachariah is trying to roll Sandoval over. He may be too far over the top of Sandoval because Sandoval is able to roll back over on his stomach right on the edge of the map, but still very much in play. He's got that near near leg, leg hook, and he's trying to lift. It's kind of like a reverse... He's scoring near fall points there almost. The referee started his count, but he didn't get in two. If you get a count of two, it's a two point near fall. If you get it up to five, then it's a three point near fall. 51 seconds to go here in the second period of wrestling. Eight for the Aptos Mariners, Ramon Zacharias. Michael Sandoval from Scotts Valley tried to get out of that one with almost looked like a somersault attempt. He's yeah. on the bottom and in trouble. Yeah, he tried to do a run out, but he didn't clear his feet. If you don't clear your feet, that's not going to work for you. But uh, a lot of times you can do that. You can fire out forward or do a, you know, a shoulder roll out and you can get out of there. But uh, I think Zacharias has too much uh, experience to let that happen. He's got both arms of yeah. Sandoval's right behind Sandoval's back at yeah. this time. Inside 30 seconds to go. Yeah, Look at that ride. Yeah, he's got the double arm bars looking to hook the head so he'll turn. There it is. Now he'll, if he figure four is ahead, but he's not going to do that. He's Here we, Sandoval is in trouble. Sandoval is pin. Zacharias winning on a pin. Only 8.6 8. 8. seconds left when, that, when he pinned him. So three matches in the books. Aptos is the victor in all three. Two of those are via the pin. Also like to thank Kathy Wiley and Desperacy uh -huh. Seeking yeah, Chocolate Ramon, Dessert yeah. Sauces. Winchester yeah. Auto Parts, Scotts Valley. Terry Heshert. If you need some auto parts for your car, van, truck, whatever you need, go to Winchester Auto Parts in Scotts Valley, 214A Mount Herman Road in Scotts Valley. Also from Cafe El Palomar on 2222 East Cliff Drive. Coming up. Sonny Torres from Soquel in the blue singlet against Kevin Eddington from San Lorenzo Valley, excuse me, Scotts Valley in the red anklet, that Eddington in the red anklet. Torres right now on top in the green anklet in the blue singlet. Kevin, Kevin Eddington from Scotts Valley is a two-time league champion already at, at 
105 pounds in 2011 and 2012. Sonny Torres was the champion last year at 130, and uh, he was third in 2012. So he's uh, he's actually down. Well, he's actually in the same weight class as he was last year. So Eddington has moved up, you know, from 105 to one, and 105 up to 100 and 130 pounds. He's growing. He's in a growing spurt. He's hit that one. Sonny Torres with two points so far on it. And now he is in control of Eddington, sitting right on top, just forcing that neck down to the forehead, down to the mat. Yeah. Sonny Torres, I don't know if, if he might have been hurt this season or not, but he his current record is 3-4, and four, and he's a senior. Um, I would think his record, we may not be getting his full record. I don't know how many tournaments they went to or not this year because the program was nearly dropped with the lack of having a coach. And... Uh, uh, one of the one of the wrestlers' dads came forward and took that position as the coach. Now, Torres yeah, trying to maintain Ed, control. Eddington almost yeah, out. Yeah, almost out. He came out of there. He, he tried to pull the rock over from the top. There he goes. He's gonna. He gets that other leg. He's gonna get in control. You need that control right, to right, escape. Well, right now, you know, Torres is still in control. Ed, oh, not now. Eddington rolled him over on his back. There's your reversal at two points, Pat. Two points. Yep. He got it. Eddington kept working on that. Finally got it. Persistence pays off in wrestling? It sure does. Yeah, Eddington is 19 and 10 on the year, and he's ranked 16th in the CCS. So we get leave the first two minutes of wrestling, heading in for the second period. 2-2, two, two, so we are still all knotted up at the 128-pound class. One thing about, as I read the, the information on Eddington, you know, He's uh, also, you know, wrestling in the freestyle, Greco-Roman at the state tournament and all that stuff. So, Fun. so he's uh, he's really staying with it, you know. Sonny Torres gets a far ankle grab, but he loses that one. Sonny really working hard. Eddington has his work cut out. For yeah, him. he's trying to lift that leg and step through, step through, so he can so he can turk turk him over, but he he can't quite get Eddington's leg up and get a real deep step through. You get a deep step through, and then you reach back and, and, and hook the arm and take him over to his back. Tor Torres is a good rider. Ed Eddington caught him with that roll. Eddington, if oh, he can not. get himself turned, he's going to do it. Not. One, 36 yeah. to go. He's got him in trouble now. Torres in trouble. Torres is pinned. Eddington pins Torres at 133 into the second period. And that's Eddington's third championship. As wow. A, as a high school wrestler. In three different weight classes? Uh, no, he was 105 the first two years. Oh, okay. 130 this year. So he, he uh, he's really uh, dedicated himself. Coming in now, 134, Willie Lamacha from Harbor High School, one of the better wrestlers that I know of here in the county, and he's going to go against Miguel Barranco from Aptos High School. And while we wait for those two, they had so kill had every kid on their team. Get him, get him out of there. A couple of these wrestlers to go. Thanks to KP Construction, Ken Palestrini, the owner, Ted Kraft, and Kraft family at Kraft Auto Body, 6100 Soquel Avenue. If you need your car fixed, a ding, a dent, something like that, go to Kraft Auto Body again at 6100 Soquel Avenue, Santa Cruz. And a special thanks to the San Lorenzo Valley High School Aptos Boosters Club. Their generous donations are making this telecast possible. Here we go. This might be the classiest guy we have in our league right here, Willie La Mancha. He's 31 and seven on the year. He's second ranked in the CCS. If he if he does get hurt or something disastrous doesn't happen to him, he's going to be on to the be headed to the state championship this year. He he uh, he's an all around guy. He likes to surf, uh, likes to watch uh, <laughs> football and TV, and he likes food. I can't know. I don't know food? why a wrestler. Nice single, beautiful single move by La Mancha there. Got all the right positioning on it. Take up on that knee. Trying to set him, set him down there. There's danger uh, of getting out of bounds, and he is out of bounds. Not quite. He got his got his foot out of bounds there. Didn't was unable to keep his toes in. 
They'll come back to the center, start again with 110 remaining. La Mancha is a real technician too. I've seen him several times this season and uh, the guy really knows that mat. You know, he's one of the guys who's grown up. He's been a, a champion, a two-time champion in the league. He was at 119 pound champion in 2011 and 132 pound champion last year, 2012. He is not letting go of Barranco's yeah, he's uh, wrist. He, he's he, got that on a vice grip. Yeah, he's working that two-on-one wrist ride. That's a that's a tough one. Uh, that was the Europeans used to use that a lot. There he goes for the takedown. Barranco gets out of bounds, but there's two points in favor of La Mancha. Yeah, La Mancha was able to keep his toes in that time and score the takedown. Pat, I'm watching. I'm watching Willie. He loves wrestling. I yes. mean, he's he's got a grin on his. If you can have a grin while you're getting <laughs> while you're busy. He's smiling. Yeah. Uh, Barranco is uh, 16 and 13 on the year. He's the 11th grader uh, from Aptos. And he wants to uh, attend Stanford University after he's done with high school. Lamacha's got a nice little arm bar back there. Both of them go out of bounds. Still two to nothing in favor of Lamacha of uh, Harbor. Again, he is in the green singlet with the green anklet. Miguel Lamont getting to get out. He yeah. Yeah, Lamont is quick on those hands, you know, to, uh, to tie up those ankles. He's not letting a lot of movement in there. At the end of the first two minutes, Lamont is on top, two to nothing. Flip of the coin. Willie goes in the down position. Unusual? He, no, no, he, he probably has a. You know, he knows that he can get up out of there. He's good, good on the bottom. Does a great job here. You see him, he keep his, try and keep his leg to the outside, keep the pressure on his opponent right here. He hooked that leg until he breaks the hand. Now he's got a one point escape. Three nothing in far favor of La Mancha. Barranco takes, goes the shot, but I like how La Mancha now just has his upper body right on top of Barranco, yeah. just taking it to the mat. Now that was a nice, nice move there. With it, pulls the head down that, goes across to that far leg, and just sets him right on his rear end. He's gonna go up on his feet. He's gonna, I think he's gonna win the takedown game here now. Five to nothing in favor of La Mancha. Minute and a half to go here in the second round. Bronco. I, I, I'm just impressed with the, the hand and arm strength of La Mancha. I mean, he gets his grips on you and he's not gonna let go. Yeah, and he's so quick with that high crotch right there. You know, he pulls him in a little bit, boom, he's got that high crotch. Once he gets him down here, it can transfer his arm to two legs, like he did there, he's got the takedown. Now he's got his leg almost deep enough in there where he can do that Turk over, uh, but he can't quite do it and he lost it again. And he'll probably go up on his feet again. He'll probably play takedown with him. Miguel doing a nice job of scrambling to the out of bounds to save his bacon. <laughs> on, on that one because it looked like La Mancha really had him. It was yeah. just going to be a moment in time. 50 seconds to go here in the second round. I'm Kurt Edwards with the Commish, the Hall of Famer, Pat Lovell. Well, thank you. <laughs> but Pat, it's always fun to do these wrestling matches with you. I, mean, just, I look forward to it every year. <laughs> I'm glad we could do it this year. You know, uh, last year the, you know, uh, Community TV had that new truck and was able to do it this year with a little different thing. Uh, some of the wrestling families raised the money to bring the TV people in this year, which I thought was a great thing. And it's a great experience for the kids to see themselves on, on TV, you know. There's La Mancha on that single, transfers to a double. Got a lift, lift here. Him. Now, can he safely get him back to the mat? Yeah, step through. Now he's got the leg hooked deep. Now he should be able to turn him. He'll either keep it on his chin there or hook the arm. On top, 11 to three. And the count is on, Miguel is in trouble. He's trying to bridge his way out of it, roll back onto his stomach, able to survive to go for another two minutes. Yeah. 14 for La Macha and three points for Barranco from Aptos. Yeah, we're, we're able to see a, a tech fall here, uh, Kurt. You know, if La Mancha uh, is up by 15, uh, the match is over. And I, th 
I think Bronco, what he was just trying to do there was set up the a double arm throw, but it didn't work there. La Mancha get on that outside single. He comes to the Iranian here, push pull. You see he'll come around, hook the leg, and I'll watch him pop his head out, and he's gonna score here. And Bronco now is in a bad position if he doesn't turn. Lamach is able to get two points on that one, but not giving up any part of yeah. control. Can Willie get back on top of him and get a pin? Bronco's really fighting hard to get out of that one. Okay, tech fall. We have a tech fall in that issue. Head of his opponent by more than 15. Final score, 19 for Willie LaMancha from Harbor High School, and he's going to go on to the CCS, yeah. and I'm assuming state. Yeah, great great match and great technical skills he had there. You know, he uh, he has some great workout partners, and uh, he's doing a great, great job. Again, as Pat had said, many of these parents Thank and you. everyone else came together to get the money together. So this TV program could be on CTV. One of it is Performance Food Services, also known as Ledger's, at 1047 17th Avenue in Santa Cruz. Have it in your knees for food services, plates, foods, they deliver it. You can see their trucks out there on the road all the time throughout Santa Cruz and Monterey County. Here we go for the 140s, Miller Clark and Nick Reyes. Miller Clark with the red singlet on in the block A from Aptos. Reyes from Scotts Valley. Both of them in the dark, but Reyes has the green anklet on. Miller Clark, he is a determined, quick wrestler. The Texas Tornado, great bear hug there. Takes him, takes him right down. Those are the kind of transfers you love to get. <laughs> Clark quickly on top, two to nothing. Uh, Miller Clark, you know, transferred in from Texas. He was on the Texas, on their national team and stuff. The kid is, uh, is a terrific athlete, you know, and you can see how powerful he's built here. He's going for a nice tilt here. Pulls him right across his waist. He's very powerful, very quick. On his feet, you watch him on his feet, he's like a ballerina. Two and, more points, for, I'm sorry, Pat. Two yeah. more points for Clark up 4-0. And basically, he just let Nick out. Yeah, he's going to play takedowns with him now. He, you watch the quickness that he has here. Clark is 22-7 and seven on, on the year and ranked sixth in the CCS. And Nicholas Reyes is 13-13. Uh, and 13. and he is, uh, he's only a ninth grader, but you've, got, but you've got a tenth grader in Clark who's uh, wrestled extensively. You know, he's been had a lot, a lot of matches, and that's... That's what, like in any sport, makes you better. The more you do it, the better you're going to be. 6-1 in favor of Clark from Aptos over Reyes from Scotts Valley. And you can see Clark, he's got that good control of the right arm by Reyes and just riding him, trying to hook that leg. Now he decides, well, I'll just slowly walk around and try and turn him over. Yeah, now he's working the arm bar on the, on the far side. Now he's lost it again. He's just waist riding here, but he'll... he'll Trap that left arm if he can. You watch him, or his right arm, and he'll go to the go to the tilt position. He likes to do the get that cheap tilt. You know, trap that arm against the body, and then you know take him right over for the near fall. I'm watching as Miller Clark wrestles. He has the confidence, the patience to actually look up at the clock and see where the time is on this thing. I don't know if he's, and I think that's. Unusual for yeah. a high school wrestler. Clark picks up Reyes, returns him to the mat, picks up two more points, and Reyes is in trouble now. Great, great shot on the single, and the thing that Reyes didn't do there, Reyes didn't react when he hit the mat. He should have turned immediately to his stomach rather than staying in that position because he he uh, ended up you know, losing a couple more points on a near fall there. Miller looks over at his uh, coach, Reggie Roberts, for some instructions. He's on top. 11 to 1 with 120 to go here in the second period of wrestling. Clark definitely in control, just riding his opponent. 115 to go. Clark again on top, on top and in control. Now grabs the wrist and is going to. There you see that roll through again, that double wrist ride. He's got him in near fall situation right now. We might see another. We might see another technical fall here. There's. Couple more points and then just a nice easy escape. 13 to two, Reyes gets a point for an escape. 
He's got the classic stance too, uh, Kurt. You know, you could tell that he's very experienced just by the way his body language is and how he takes those quick, quick little moves to offset his uh, opponent. He's just loosey-goosey, but just as quick as a cat. Quickly back in control. If he gets a near fall here, it'll be all over. 15 points, 25 seconds to go here in the second period of wrestling here at the 140 pound weight class. Again, I'm Kurt Edwards with Pat Lovell, CTV Sports. Happy to bring you the SCCAO Wrestling Championship 2012-2013 from San Lorenzo Valley High School. Just riding him, five seconds to go in the second period. Clark is in absolute no hurry. I think he was looking to end it there, but Reyes is putting up a real good fight, you know. He's not about just to roll over for you. He's, he's going to be a, somebody to be reckoned with in the next couple of years, I'll tell you. Oh, I think the personality of the wrestlers, my opinion, Pat, is there's not really any quit or give up in any of you guys, in any of the levels. that. Yeah. Unless you're the WCW, then they just go in the corner and quit. <laughs> Third period. Clark from Aptos in control. Quickly... Gets two points on a reversal, and there's your technical. Technical fall. So Miller from Clark Miller, Miller Clark, I'll get it. Let's, you know, it's a tough one when you have yeah. two first or last names. Yeah, that's right. However you say it, you know. You're going to get it right from Aptos with the technical fall, 17-2 to two victory over Nick Reyes, moving to the 147-pound weight class. Mike Kraft from San Lorenzo Valley. And from Scotts Valley, Christian Leonetti. Not gonna waste any time, here yeah. we go. Michael Kraft is uh, ranked fifth in the, in the uh, CCS and he's 30 and seven on the season. If he wins this tonight, it'll be his fourth league championship. And not many guys could say they were a four time league champion. Uh, when I was at James Lick High School, I had one by the name of Jim Plunkett, and he was a pretty fair football player, too. <laughs> Kraft with a nice trip. The advantage that Kraft has is he's so tall for this weight class. I was going to say and length it, helps. Yeah, oh boy, does it ever. So he uh, was able to step across and, and, and trip Leonetti down there. Leonetti, of course, you know, is a ninth grader, and here you're rushing a possible four-time league, league champion. Kraft. Kraft's going to put him right over with that arm bar. Really working he's got, hard. He's got him in trouble. So, and he'll keep he'll keep working. He's the he's another kid that could be reckoned with. I'm pretty sure that he he's got the capabilities. Kraft does to go to the state tournament this year. Oh, there he is. Leonetti gets Kraft rolls Leonetti on his shoulders, and we have a pin for Michael Kraft with 54 seconds left to go in the first two minutes period of this particular bout. Very good, very good technique on that, you know, on that stack and stuff. They so did that arm bar and then stack them up like that. You know, that's a, that was a very good technically. Both of these guys, you know, I've, I know it broke your heart or as an arrow goes through your heart as you were quoted in the Santa Cruz Center with Julie Jags with the uh, wrestling for the USO, the IOC, possibly disbanding wrestling for the 2020, which I think is yeah. pretty dumb. I know yeah. that college wrestling will stay. Do you think any of these young wrestlers are going to be able to uh, continue after this one, some of these seniors? Well, you know, um, Kurt, the whole thing is, you know, like in any sport, if you're a Major League Baseball player, look how many years guys play in the minors before they get anywhere. And look at Guys like now we have the Santa Cruz Warriors, those guys playing in the D-League are all trying to make the big time taxi squad for the NFL guys and stuff. It's the same thing here, you know. A kid has a dream. you got to dream high. you got to be able to face adversity and, and, and everything else, you know, to get to that pinnacle. And, uh, and the thing is, you know, it, it, it like it's like shooting an arrow into your heart for, for wrestling because, you know, we don't have... Uh, we don't have guys that make millions of dollars as wrestlers and and uh, that type of stuff. So let's get back to this. Brian Batisto is 20 and nine on the season, fourth ranked in the CCS. I know he's had a little bit of injury problems, so I don't know, but he's a, he's also a real goer here. He'll keep shooting at you. He doesn't waste any time. 
Batisto in the green, singlet. And Priors, Priors, excuse me, Doug Priors is in the dark uniform and the red anklet. Batista. Nice double leg dig down. He's got him in good position if he can hook that, hook the leg there. There you go. Now, Peiser was, was smart enough to turn away on that, not keep trying to fight it because he would, you notice the position he was in. If uh, Batista moves right up into him, he could put him right on his back. Peiser is 19 and 12 on the season. He's a 10th grader. And uh, Batista is, uh, is a junior. Now, this is an interesting predicament they both are yeah, into. Yeah, now, now he's got that, that arm bar down through the crotch here. And he's going to take him with that, oh, take him with that roll through, but it didn't work because he lost the arm. Now, you can take him either way in this. You can take him toward himself, or he could take, dive across and pull him over that way. But you got to make sure you have the arm tight. I mean, that's the key. With 12 seconds to go, Batisto in command, and he's on top, two to nothing against Doug Pizer of Scotts Valley. Again, Batista in the green singlet is gonna walk out of the first two minutes of wrestling with the lead of two points to zero. Yeah, you see Batista's got that wrist pretty heavily taped up. So uh, he's had some problems with, the, with that wrist. He uh, coached by Brendan, Brendan Gwynn and Marshall Houston uh, the harbor coaches. Nice reversal on, the, on that. He was fourth at the Webb Lawson, first at the Bill Martell, seventh at the Coach Classic, third at the Mid-Cals, and second at Overfelt. Those are some pretty good tournaments to place that high in. Sith. Doug Peicher is uh, he, he's the honorable mention in CCS as a sophomore. That's pretty darn good. And his coaches, of course, are Jared Norman, Fred Cortez, Wasim Le Lefty, Ken Kennegard, Mike Parrish, and Barry Marjoram. Plus a cast of many more. 4-1 <laughs> is the score, and that is to <laughs> Batisto. Yeah, they've got a, a few coaches. Aptos has a plethora of coaches, as does Scotts Valley. They really promote wrestling. I have a feeling they probably work with their football coaches a great deal to recruit some of the football players. Yeah, you know, that's that's one of the, the sticking points, you know. I hate to say it, but some of the football coaches will tell the kids to go in the weight room and they they think that that's a do-all, end-all. It is not. Wrestling will make you so much better football player, it's unbelievable. And until some of them realize that, uh, wrestling's always fighting an uphill battle. Whistle out of bounds with 47 seconds to go in the second period. Batista on top of Pfizer 6-2-1. Batista... On top on this one. Nice little cross chest, quick move. Pfizer gets out of it. She that little tried that little foot sweep on him. As he as he came up, he was trying to clip him over, but he's pretty quick. You know, he get that front head head and arm position. He gets around there real quick. Now he's got the cradle. He's going to try and take him with a near side cradle here. If he can get, lock that tight. Now here's another one you can. He could go either way, take him back or roll him across, one or the other, but he couldn't quite hold it. Doug able to escape for a while. 12 seconds to go here in the second period of wrestling. Batisto really cranking, trying to get his weight on top of Pizer and his out of bounds whistle with one second to go. That's a good time to go out of bounds, huh? That means you gotta walk back twice. Yeah. Yep, too quick. Doug Peicher was first at the Ed Farrell Invitational, second at the Joe Camilleri Classic, and <laughs> consolation champion at the uh, Albany Invitational, seventh, seventh in the Dawn to Dust Tournament. Dun, 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 dun. Dawn to Dust Tournament? That just sounds ominous just by its yeah, it does. Own, to own title. Sounds scary. Here we go, starting the third two minute period. Batisto on top, eight to two. Pizer trying to figure out how to escape again, but then get in control, and Batisto's not having anything. Pizer does, now I was gonna say he got out, but the referee says, nope, he didn't get out cleanly. Yep, too, it's too quick. They didn't break, break long enough. 
Batista, both wrestlers, nope, not quite, because as Pat said, feet have to be out of bounds. Shoulder, who cares? Now there's a nice little ankle ride. Looks like yeah. he's trying to twist see, it now, off. You see how he's turning them right here? He has to turn his shoulders so they the shoulders do not go over the line. If the one shoulder's on the mat, the other mat shoulder goes over the line, you don't count. He has to be, both shoulders have to be within the circle. Still eight to two, a minute 20 to go in the third period. Batista right now in control and in command. And I say right now, Pat, because I've seen wrestling matches turn at the snap of a finger. Yeah, oh yeah. It, yeah, you make one, one, one mistake and it, it can really cost you big time. 60 seconds to go for Batista to come away with a victory here and probably advance on to the CCS tournament. Yeah, he's got his vine in on the far side here. He's trying to hook that cradle up here. But uh, Pfizer's giving him a good a good fight here. Pfizer, also one of those long, lanky wrestlers. Yeah. When he's trying to stay spread out. Batista just riding him right now. 33 seconds to go. He's still trying. He still has control of that wrist. Yeah. Oh. He, yeah, he's riding him. He's got a real tough ride on him here. When you got your arm down through your crotch and your head crammed down, down to your chest, it's pretty hard to move. Not, not the easiest way to crawl. Almost kicks out, but Batista yep. now has him in trouble. He got, he got caught in that front sit out. He was, and Batista was able to pull him right back in, back down and score the near fall on him. Two more points, and that's going to be it. So Batista for Harbor. Wrestles a good solid six minutes, comes out a winner, 10 to two over Doug at Scotts Valley. And that was, you know, that was another good six minutes of wrestling. Nice technical wrestling that time. Yeah, very, Doug Pizer. very good. I think Batisto probably didn't go full speed. It didn't look like he, uh, with that wrist, I think it might be having some trouble with that wrist. Going on the 162, Austin Verdugo from Aptos. And Andy Ramirez with the uh, maroon, I guess, jersey and the red singlet from Scotts Valley. Verdugo is 3-0 and in league and uh, Ramirez is 1-0 and in league this season in dual meets. So Andy Ramirez mu must have came out late or something because he doesn't have, have much of a record. Uh, Austin Verdugo is seven and seven. These are two sophomores, so they're gonna see each other for a couple more years if they don't change weight classes. I have a feeling they're just gonna go right up the ladder with each other. They, they look like they have similar yeah. builds. Oh, nice, nice, beautiful, beautiful double leg position on that. Verdugo yeah. got him in the good double leg and then just started, looked like it was a single man sled drill on that one, just drove him right out of bounds. Yeah, he had a. Great, nice single. Oh, almost had it again. Verdugo trying to Nick, get Ramirez back yeah. in the mat. Not going to do it. Here's him. We're seeing some great action out there right now, I tell you. You know, it's fun thing. There's a lot of action. No score. Ramirez with the shot. Verdugo says no. Back up on their feet. And we got all of the scribes here. Glenn Cravens from the Register Pajaronia to my right. Jim Seamus across the map. Coverage like you wouldn't believe here. Ramirez with a little bit of an escape runs yeah. away. And it's still no scoring. We're inside a minute to go. Yeah, they're taking some, some good shots out there, but everything is ending up out of bounds. There he goes again. And finally, a st stalling warning against Ramirez for Back it up. It looks like Verdugo is taking most of the shot. So again, we're in the one. I'm sorry, Pat. We're in the 162-pound class. You got to even the shots up. You know, you got to take some yourself. Verdugo definitely looks like the aggressor. Ramirez, I thought might have had him a little bit, get with that head lock, head position, but Verdugo gets out of it. Inside, 20 seconds to go. Both wrestlers. I, Verdugo's sort of anxious to really mix it up. Ramirez doesn't seem so. There, he got it. Finally. Like, nice move. Nice move, taking him right down to his back. 
Nice five point move. Double right to his back, that's the way to go. So Austin Verdugo waits to get inside 10 seconds, does a brilliant move, gets Ramirez up in the air, plants him back down. Verdugo up five to nothing. Here comes our second two minutes of wrestling. And he probably took five or six or seven shots, you know, and uh, Ramirez was not able to get one off very well. He's quick, I'll tell you, very quick. Another takedown just on a spin around. Verdugo's got him. Picks up two more points. Two more points. 7-0. I love that little cross face where the wrestler just fires the forearm right through your upper palate. <laughs> the nosebleed special. Uh-oh. Ramirez trying to get out. Now he's got Verdugo in a headlock. Rolls him over. And gets trapped. And then finds himself in trouble. Verdugo picks up a couple more points. Yep. Nine to nothing. That was a nice roll through on the headlock, you know. Um, Ramirez threw that thing pretty nice, but he was a little bit too parallel, and so Verdugo was able to roll right on through. Ramirez gets one point for Verdugo letting him go, basically. Folks, you think wrestling is not tiring? You go out there and go flat out like a lizard drinking for two minutes against somebody. An extra total of six yeah. minutes and see if you're not winded when you're done with this. Redugo is really working that double leg, double leg very well. And uh, his follow-up, too, when he comes up, he, he waits just a little bit to see what the reaction is of the opponent. If he lets him stay there, he'll crank him right to his back. He's now, he, his now he's working on the cradle. Now we'll see if he's going to roll through or he's going to take him back. Got 18 seconds to do it. Ramirez. Oh, nice, out, but nice. Verdugo does a nice little spin around. Nice. Ramirez is in trouble and pin. Oh, that was nice. Beautiful roll on that. Beautiful roll to put him right on his back. Austin Verdugo out of Aptos. Pins Andy Ramirez with 10.8 seconds to go in the second period. He had him on points and was definitely in control, but... You're right, Pat. That was just a very sweet move. Yeah, that was nice, yeah. Looked like he was in real trouble. He's going to lose control and just kept right on rolling. Real quick, we want to thank Kathy Wiley of Desperately Seeking Chocolate Dessert Sauces. You can find them on the web at dschocolate.com. Gerardo from San Lorenzo Valley in the red singlet and Mitch Gehring Aptos in the dark singlet. And... Uh. Gerardo finds himself, Jeremiah finds himself in trouble real quick. Gerardo, Gerardo tried to take down, got a little bit off ba balance. But nice and reversal. reversal. Yeah. If he would have, here he goes. Craig, if he gets him over, he could be in trouble. Gary from Aptos yeah. finds himself on his back. Not a good spot. 2-2 two, two is the score right now. Minute to 30. But Gerardo in command. Okay, Pat, what are you going to do now? You're on the bottom, which you've never been before, but... What you got what you need to do, you need to bump up, drop your body down, and try and get one of your arms through between you and your opponent, and turn. That's the only thing you can do. And pray. <laughs> and pray. I'd be on the second part. I'd yeah. be doing a lot of praying. Yeah. Araldo picks up some more points. He's on top by three, five to two, with a minute and ten to go. Ken Paddlestrini goes over to the scorer's booth. Don't know what he's talking about, but also a quick shout, uh, yeah. thank you to KP Construction and Ken Palestrini, the owner of KP Constructions. For any construction need, give Ken a call. You can find him on the web and in the white or yellow pages. Here we go with a minute to go. Geraldo ripping up Gary. And now on top of him inside a minute. Just riding him, Pat. Yeah, Johnny, we got the double wrist ride there. He's trying to work that half in on him. Turn, turn him here. He's got to get out to the side, though. He can't. He's oh, he's cranking it. Can he get him? Gary tries well, to get out of it. He caught him in the headlock. Geraldo in the headlock. Keep rolling it. Now, at this point in time, we've got both legs tilted over. Is that, I mean... See, poor, poor balance. Poor balance on... On Gerardo's part, he did. He stayed too parallel with him. 
Around. So that, that's why he was able to, for Gearing to roll over on top of him. Gearing See, he should, he's reaching back. He shouldn't be reaching back because he's strong enough to come out and face you forward. He's going to switch us. Now if he trips here, step through and trips, but he's just going to horse him over. And he gets him out of bounds with point four seconds to go. Geraldo on top, 10 to four. That was a nice little exchange, as you said, Pat. Geraldo found himself a little bit too parallel, but it was a good move by Gehring to get the escape and get the points. Point four, this ought to be whistle and whistle. Yeah, these guys are a couple of bangers, aren't they? They're kind of fun watching them roll around here and uh, thing, you know, uh, Michael Gehring from Aptos is 16 and 10. He was first at the Harbor, seventh at Los Gatos, second at Fremont, and fifth at the Wilcox. And uh, he's a sophomore, Gehring's a sophomore, and uh, his, Gerardo is, uh, is a senior. Oh, a nice move by, nice move by Gary. Gary's got Geraldo in trouble and a very pins him. Whoa. Geraldo is on top and not anymore with one minute, 39 seconds to go in the second period. Gary from Aptos with the pin. Wow, that what was, a change of fortune. That was a nice move, very nice move. And I remember telling you that don't blink in wrestling because yeah. their fortunes can change at any hey, time. Hey, Kurt, real quick here, Please. we want to uh, we, we want to congratulate the Scotts Valley girls team uh, this year. They had a, just a tremendous year. They were the CCS champions in girls wrestling. Uh, they were first at the the ba at the Baylor Bash. They were second at Castro Valley, second at the Peninsula Invitational, third at the Queen of, Queen of third at the Queen of the Mat. Third of the Queen of the Mat, and 14th at the ASICS tournament in Napa. The four girls that are going to the state meet are Alicia Pitt, uh, Domino Parrish, Shelby Baker, and Ab Abigail Long Longay, Lopez Gay, I'm sorry. So congratulations to those girls, and good luck to you all in the state tournament. Uh, their coaches, Ken Kettegaard and uh, Jared Norman, just the great guys, and uh, congratulations to you girls. Here we go. We are in the 184. They're both in the dark jerseys, but we've got Baldwin Dashiv from Scotts Valley. He is in the green anklet as we get a quick little whistle there for a time, for a momentary timeout. So they're going to look at Dashiv's headgear. And Nick DeMauro from Aptos. Barriters are well represented in the finals. Yeah, Holy they certainly cow. Are. It's like Aptos against the world. The thing about Nick DeMauro, I give him a lot of credit. He is a great football player, receiver on the football team, I think, and defensive back. And he uh, he came out for wrestling as a senior. I think that Reggie has impressed so many kids that they want to be part of his part of his wrestling group. And, and so he comes out as a senior. He's 6-6 six and six on the season, and it's his first year in wrestling. Uh, the Sheev, you know, is a uh, is an exchange student, I think, from Russia somewhere like that, and uh, he uh, is 19 and 13 on the season, and he's uh, ranked eight in the CCS. So uh, he uh, he's having a great uh, great season, and I remember him from last year, a real, I would say, not a total novice, but. He's great, made great strides in uh, improving. One of the wrestlers who was not here, Carl Johnson from SLV, was injured during one of the dual meets, so he's not able to show his hardware to, or yeah. wrestling skills tonight. And DeSheves has got a leg up right now on tomorrow. I mean, literally a leg up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't let, wouldn't let go of that leg. He's great. Cranking out a half now. Baldwin in control, trying to walk him over, trying to lift him over. He's Tomorrow. trying to trying to trap that far arm, bury that half, and trap that far arm. He could take him right over because you have nothing else to stop yourself on. That has got to be one of the more uncomfortable positions I've yeah. ever seen anybody in. Tomorrow's dad was a longtime football official in in. Uh, 
high school and college here in Santa Cruz, former Cabrillo Seahawk. He, uh, years ago when the NFL went on strike, he was one of the replacement officials. And uh, he, was a, he was a great one until the old knees gave out. They'll seem to get in the way of a lot of good athletes, you know it? Yeah. Desheev still working, six seconds to go in the first period. He has a two-point lead on DeMauro from Aptos. Look at him just take that head, force it to the mat, and then turn it on those big paws. When you wake up in the morning with a, with a stiff neck, you'll know why. <laughs> That's true. The, the drills that these wrestlers go through just to strengthen their, their neck and their shoulders and their upper bodies, weight training is a big part of wrestling. Starts the second period of wrestling. Both parties are up. Looks like now is sort of the old-fashioned boxing match. And yeah, I was gonna. We got a timeout. No yeah. bleed. Yeah, they kind of they kind of get the sparring like that with their hands. You know, they don't they don't really strike any blows or anything <laughs> with each other because they would be disqualified. But. Um, that's what it looks like. It looks like a couple of boxers. Little bare, knuck bare knuckle Co boxers back yeah, in yeah, my day. Yeah, bare knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't be that old. All right, my age times three. <laughs> well, two actually would be closer. <laughs> you were you taught at James Lick. My first teaching assignment was also at James Lick over in South San Jose. East San Jose. East San Jose. Yeah. For me, it was always kind of south, but it's yeah. East San Jose. I didn't have anybody famous that I was uh, that I got to work with. You had Plunkett. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, I had Pl Jim Plunkett, Dan Lloyd, uh, both outstanding. I had many many of them. Albert Nanez wrestled for me. Heavyweight was a NorCal champion and won eight tournaments his senior year. And that's before we had, uh, you know, they counted everything that you did. You could only have 40 matches now, and. We had kids that had 60, 70 matches during the season. Holy cow. So, so times have changed. Okay, here we go. We're back at it again. We have DeMauro and DeSheev here going after each other. DeMauro's got his hips in a little too close. Good call by the yeah. referees or they were going to be in your front pocket. Yeah, trying to get a little, trying to get a little bear hug on each other here and see who can throw who. Another quick chill, changing of the headgear while we get the opportunity. I'd like to thank Dan Whiting and Whiting Foods, 613 Beach Avenue down there in Santa Cruz. And Robert, Steve Robotero of Performance Foods, also ledgered at 1447 17th Avenue in Santa Cruz for their generous donation to make this broadcast possible. The Sheaves with the shot, makes it, leg has got him. If he was still wrestling, he'd, he'd be in a yeah. great position. Yeah, he, very quick on that single. He was very quick. But very quick. she was very, very quick in that single. Had a beautiful shot, but he didn't follow through into a double. He kind of worked back to the single position where he should have kept going and worked into a double leg situation. Still two to nothing in favor of Baldwin Desheev of Scotts Valley. Demoral from Aptos. There he goes again. Beautiful position. That little back pedal. I don't. I don't know if tomorrow Well, I know tomorrow is trying to get out. Yeah. But are you consciously trying to back pedal to get out of the circle? No. I think that the motion. The motion is just taking him that way. But Jashiv needs to do it. Needs to lift him. Lift him up. You know, not crawl on your knees and lift. You need to power him up in the air to get him. Get him off his base. Jashiv comes in, and as I said, we are at the 184. Jashiv is about six foot two. So if he gets. Tomorrow up in the air. That's a long way up. Oh. Another nice little shot. Double leg. Demore looked like he was going to throw a throw a headlock. The only thing is he forgot the head. <laughs> the Chiefs with 31 seconds to go, trying to crank Demore over. The Chiefs picks up two more points. He's up four to nothing. Well, I'll tell you, Demore for a uh, for a senior first year rusher is showing a lot of heart. I'll tell you that. Heart is kind of what describes the. Uh, Reggie Roberts and the Aptos Mariners wrestling program. A lot of pride in that program. Ten seconds to go. Got trying to got that arm bar trying to rock him over. She's trying to walk him over. Three seconds to go. Can he do it? Tomorrow doing a great job of fighting him off. So DeSheeves picks up two more points. After two periods of wrestling, he is on top four to nothing. Getting ready for the third period. 
she's going to be on the bottom. Demoro on the top. Again, DeMauro, both since they have the dark singlets, Demoro has the red anklet. Now nice that, little escape. Now that time what Demoro did, he did what we call the optional start. We just place your hands on the back of your opponent. You don't, you don't, uh, you know, you don't get down the parkour position, one arm around the waist. No. And Demoro was trying to set up. Look at headlock. He's trying to step in and do a throw on Deshi, but Deshi, I think, is too smart to let him. You see that he's trying to trying to work that headlock, but Deshi won't let him in there. Both of these wrestlers just button heads, literally, folks. Forehead to forehead. Well, Demoro didn't step quite far enough with that. He got caught on his back here, or on his side. Best thing when you miss that is to let go and get to your base and then start all over again. Deshees doing a good job of riding. Looks like he's got, from this angle, which I can't see a thing, a double wrist ride. No, he's got a single arm bar. Okay. Arm, bar, arm bar on this side and a wrist ride on the other. And he rided him right out of bounds. <laughs> Either way, Demaro was not doing a thing. Seven to zero in favor of Deshees from Scotts Valley. Nick Demaro, one of the plethora, many, huge number of Aptos wrestlers. They, they, brought, a, they brought a lot of them today. And special thanks to Ryan Mulligan from CTV for coming out with his crew to make this telecast possible. A tremendous thanks from the yeah. booster clubs of San Lorenzo Valley High School and all of the wrestlers who took part in tonight's wrestling. Tremendous to have this show on the air to showcase their tremendous talent. Oh, yeah. The it, Chiefs now has tomorrow in trouble. Yeah, he's got that deep half now. He's riding him over there. See if tomorrow can fight out of that. Nope. The Chiefs with a pin with 23 seconds to go in the third period of wrestling. Great job by both of these wrestlers. The Chiefs showing me a lot of strength and tomorrow for just a first time wrestler. Yeah, first time wrestler is a senior. That's really something. A lot of technical skills yeah. on that one. A thanks to Cafe El Palomar, 2222 East Cliff Drive in yeah. Santa Cruz. Great food, great drinks, great location. Go down and enjoy yourself for lunch or <laughs> dinner or just a nice simple libation. Todd Kraft and the family and the Kraft family at Kraft Body Shop, 6100 Soquel Avenue in Santa Cruz. And of course, Winchester Auto Parts in Scotts Valley. Need a part for your car or truck? Winnebago, I don't care. Even if it's a light bulb. Winchester <laughs> Auto Parts. 214A Mount Herman Road in Scotts Valley. Terry Heshert is somebody you can go down there and talk to. Here we go. 197. Kurt. Lambaron from SLV and in the green, Colin McKenzie from Harbor. Last time I saw Kurt wrestle, it was like five seconds. Thank you very much for coming. I win. Yeah, this this has got to be one of the most outstanding looking freshmen I've ever seen in, in this league. This guy is put together, I'll tell you, like, I mean, he looks like he's a very, very mature 14-year-old young man. If he comes at you in a fight, get him on your side, folks. <laughs> And he quickly has McKenzie in trouble. Tries to get run around behind him. Cannot quite do it. McKenzie fighting for all he's worth. Yeah. He's working on that on that front head and arm, trying to get him down. Then he'll try and spin behind him. Uh, Colin McKenzie from Harbor is uh, he's 11 and, 11 and 26 on the season. I don't think that. I think it's 11 and six on the season. And he, I hope so. He wants to become a doctor. So we're, we're happy about that. We need more doctors here in Santa Cruz. We don't have enough as it is. So good luck to that young man in his life. Lambert from SLV has got two points. And now he's got McKenzie in trouble. See how he elevates with his leg. He pulls his shoulders over and then elevates with his legs to get, his, get that hip position on him. Lambert from SLV again on top. Ryan to keep control of that wrist. You can see him cranking it back behind McKenzie's back. Yeah, he's got that arm bar back there. McKenzie trying to spin out. LeBaron says, no, 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 no. Not on my watch. 
Two more points for Lambert. See. In, here we go, three seconds to go in the first period. Lambert comes out of the first period on top, four to nothing. He is a good physical specimen. Yeah. Yeah, Lambert, he's, uh, he's into knitting and synchronized swimming. <laughs> and uh, so that's how he gets so the body on him like he does. That's what builds his muscles is that knitting. <laughs> Knit one, pearl two, you know. Yeah, knitting with 300-pound presses going along on the side. Yeah. Into the second round. McKenzie still finds himself not in control. Lambert, Kurt from SLV, just riding it out. Yeah, he's got him tied up down there. He can't do very much. If you really want to turn him, you got to get out to the side, you know, get out to the side and crank him. He's just hanging on to that two-on-one. I imagine the referee's going to call somebody here for stalling because there's not much action. McKenzie's getting his headpiece, the straps anyways, down around his eyes. So as we saw a couple of wrestlers ago, we were just wrestling in the dark. Kurt trying to roll McKenzie over, almost did it. McKenzie trying to fight back, gets back over on front. He got a couple points on that, on that, on that cheap tilt again. He was able to crank him, crank him over and elevate him. I like the way the officials are working these matches, Pat. Yeah, these are these guy, three guys are three of the best officials, not only in Northern California, but the whole state. They've worked multiple, multiple state tournaments. Nice, nice single, nice move there by Lambre. He Lambu, he did a great job on that. Um, Keith Pickard, who's our referee right now, many, many times I've worked with, with uh, Keith over the years one of our most outstanding wrestlers in this area, uh, I'm excuse me, officials, former judo man at San Jose State, uh, his judge here, Fernando Securios, uh, from over at San Jose, wrestled at Silver Creek High School, just has done a tremendous job, and uh, Mike Haar, uh, our third official, has just been outstanding. He's, he's done more state tournaments than any other referee in, in our association. As we come to the end of the second period of wrestling, second two minutes, we go San Lorenzo Valley is on top, eight, two, one. We're gonna have. McKenzie on top. Boy, quick, Kurt is so quick out of that one. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, that was a quick sit out and a turn in. Boy, he was out of there in a flash, wasn't he? Pick up some points for the escape. There it is, nine to one now. SLV wrestler is doing a good job. Just measuring his opponent. Yeah, he's certainly stalking him at this point in time, you know, trying to set some, something up for him. That Baron looking, he's on top, nine to one. We're in the third period of wrestling here at San Lorenzo Valley High School. He's got that, got that front head and arm now. You're watching me, he'll power him down. Well, that was an oh. interesting corkscrew. Oh, great, great secondary move on that to score the takedown. And we've got McKenzie in trouble and McKenzie in a pin. Yeah. We have another freshman champion. We're gonna see him probably as a four-timer. The pin at 105 to go in the third period of wrestling. So San Lorenzo Valley's got some very, very good wrestlers you know, coming down the pipe. One being Jed, Jed Kraft, who's just a freshman. He was defeated earlier by Gio Zacharias. Now we're coming to, we're going up in weight class, folks. You just saw the 197 pounders. Here is room 222, Dakota Francis and Alex Bonsale from Aptos High School. Dakota Francis from Harbor High School. Again, both of them in the dark uh, singlets. So Alex Bonsale has the red anklet on him, and Dakota Francis, who is from Harbor, has the green anklet on him. 
Again, this should be a real good match. I, these two had met during the season. I think that France, Francis, excuse me. Yeah, I think that Dakota Francis beat beat uh, Bonzel earlier in, in the year in the dual meet. But these two guys are both great football players. Both uh, both are seniors, uh, college potential, I think, in, in football. Uh, and Dakota Francis is 18 and eight. He's ranked third in CCS. And, and Alex Bonzel is 10 and five. And uh, he is also a very studly youth. Well, Dakota Francis, I talked to him a little bit, Pat, before the bout. He's headed for Cabrillo oh, next yeah. year. Oh, well, good. So we're going to get we're, some good football players yeah. from him. Still no score, a minute to go. Yeah. Bonzel tried that, tried that headlock, and it didn't quite work. He didn't quite get his hips across. You saw him lose that, and DeFrancis came up with the, uh, you know, with the takedown on that move. So Dakota's just going to do as we're waiting. Making sure everything's okay. Bonsall on the bottom. Dakota Francis on top. Yeah, Bill Garrison, He, I was talking to him the other night, and you know that the big boys they have, Letter of Intent Day. Bill loves Letter of Intent Day because now he knows who he can really go after. Yeah. Dakota Francis, very, very quick. Alex Bonsale finds himself in the clutches of the big pirate from Harbor High School. Inside a minute to go, Francis really riding the Aptos Mariner. Bonsale trying to stand up. Dakota Francis putting all of his weight on him. And Alex is able to get out. Wow, 2-1. That's a nice little momentum move. Yeah, the football mentality will set in here. We'll probably see a lot of nice double leg tackles or something, you know. You try and throw these guys at this size, it becomes pretty difficult sometimes, you know. But if you get them going, you get their momentum going, you can do it. We have one more bout after we get done with these two folks, and we will have seen 28 of the best wrestlers in the SCCAL. There's another, another great shot on a double leg takedown, but no, uh, no return. And flashing in front of cameras, moving quicker than the speed of light, <laughs> was Reggie Roberts, just in case these wrestlers left the mat and headed for the hardwood. Second to go, we're gonna hear the whistle. 2-1 as we come out of the first two minutes. Dakota Francis is the one on top. Bonsell decides he's gonna go to the neutral position, so both wrestles will stand up. Yeah. We see him give those both hands up. We got a neutral, neutral position there. Yeah, these are a couple of, a couple of big horses here fighting it out. I'll tell you that. And they're quick too, Pat. They're big horses and they're quick. You yeah. just watch them spin. Yeah, you can tell they're fine athletes. You know, Dakota Francis also a tra once he gets done with wrestling, will go out for the Pirates track and field team. And though he's fast enough to be a sprinter. I don't know if he's going to yeah. get out there, but he definitely, he's a thrower and a, sh and a putter. Yeah. You never know about that. You know, that's such a technical sport. You know, that you got to have great coaching to pick up all the technical skills for that. Here and they come. They're kind of just feeling each other out here again and playing a little risk game here. Bonzel with a nice shot. Nice shot on the single. Good call by the referee. Could not, could not quite get it up there. I, I noticed with Dakota Francis, once he got that leg up, he got his other hand and was pushing Bonsale's uh, yeah. neck right up. Yeah, Bonsale's now three inches taller. Block it on the chin. Remember, the body follows the head. So if you could push that head away, the body will go with it. Brendan Gwynn, who is the coach for Harvard, good job of teaching that technique. Dakota Francis going for the double leg takedown and nothing. Two to one is our score in favor of Dakota Francis from Harbor High. Equipment malfunction, flat tire. Again, Dakota Francis with the green anklet on and Alex Bonsell with the red anklet on. Alex from Harbor, Dakota, excuse me, Alex from Aptos. You know, I've, I've seen Francis work before. He uh, he got a great double, but what he needs to do, he needs 
when he fires it, he's got to get his hips under and lift in order to, to get the guy off, off his balance or off his base and get him down. He gets great shots, but you've got to follow through. You've got to get a lift in there after you hit it. Nice headlock by Dakota Francis and both wrestlers. Not out, now they're out of bounds. Did we get a two points? Two point takedown, toes in. The other man had to wait on his hands, out of bounds, it's still a takedown. So two more points for Dakota Francis. We get a timeout. And again, a quick little <laughs> thanks for our sponsor, San Lorenzo Valley High School Athletic Booster Club, Todd Kraft and the Kraft family at Kraft Family Body Shop, 6100 Soquel Avenue, KP Construction, Ken Palestrini, he's the owner, Cafe El Palomar, 2222 East Cliff Drive down in Santa Cruz, great food, great drinks, great atmosphere. Go down and give them a look. Winchester Auto Parts in, in Scotts Valley, 214A Mount Hermon Road in Scotts Valley. All your needs for your truck, car, auto, whatever you need, they've got it there. Also, if you want some resources information, also be able to get down there, talk to the great people down at Winchester Auto Parts. Kathy Wiley and desperately seeking chocolate dessert sauces. And we're back at it with 10 seconds to go inside the second period. Dakota Francis on top. And riding. Got that wrist ride on him again. He's taking Bonzelli, he's holding him down there pretty well. You know, I'd like to uh, congratulate our coaches tonight. You know, they've dressed up for this event. The, the decorum is, is very good. I'm very proud of the coaches of the SCCAL showing up and with their coats and ties and stuff. That shows a lot of class for their program and for our league. Here we go. Last couple minutes of wrestling. Five to one is the score in favor of Dakota Francis. This may be the longest four minutes I've ever watched and we've got two more to go. These wrestlers are probably getting to be tired that last minute of wrestling, which is where the decision could come in. Just thump foreheads right there. Yeah, there's some good, good head banging, head banging out there. Dakota's got to fix his, uh, put his little cap on. You have to have that if you have, your hair is too long, you just put the cap on and put your headgear over the top of it. You're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, just talking to some of these wrestlers throughout the event, great students, great individuals, and of course, very, very talented athletes. Yeah, both, both of them very, very good. Still, all this time, try to go. Francis goes for a shot. Bonsale and Reggie Roberts hit the hardwood. Bonsale just a little bit frustrated. And I'm sure, Pat, both of these wrestlers have to be frustrated because they can't really do anything. They'll, they'll go, for, the sh they'll go yeah. for that shot, but they can't quite pull the leg in and lift. Yeah, they're so, uh, I would say they're so evenly matched, too. You know, the score doesn't show that. The score shows seven to one, but they really evenly match. It looks like in strength and, and uh, you know, the other things that go with it. And uh, so you get kind of that standoff. And, you know, if, if they just follow through on some of your moves, you, the score could be a lot closer. As you're being a great wrestler, official of wrestlers, is, is, is the strength of a great wrestler Starting a move, but knowing how you, what you're going to be able to do once you finish that move uh, versus just throwing a move and saying, okay, that's great. Yeah, no, it, yeah, you've got, to, you've got to think of the end result of it. You can't just power in there and do nothing. He's cranking that half pretty good on, on Bonzel there. Bonzel trying to get out of it. He is down by six, steps out, gets an escape, one point, seven to two. Inside a minute to go. All Dakota has to do is wrestle intelligently. They're going to battle, battle to the end here. I wouldn't have it any other way. Their coaches would not have it any other way. Yeah. Still right up at the head, trying to find some weakness in the opponent. It's been very difficult to find, Pat. 30 seconds to go. Whoa! I think... Reggie got the worst of that one. Yeah. But I will give him credit. Here's one quick. 
Safety is paramount, and you can see the way these coaches react he's a, as the... He's the quickest coach I've seen tonight. Yeah. Second one, probably Ken Palestrini from San Lorenzo Valley High School. Both of them are quick getting over to make sure the wrestlers stay in and don't get hurt. Yeah. 15, 14 seconds to go. 7-2 to two is the score. Dakota Francis looks like he's going to win this one on points. Out of bounds, 5.7 seconds to go. Have you seen a pin come this fast, Pat? With five seconds to go? Seen uh, yeah. a pin go this quick? Well, yeah, you know, the only thing you can do is a throw, what we used to call, you know, go in your victory, what you call your victory mode, where you try and get a lateral drop or a headlock, something that, that'll, a five point move or a pin. But, you know, when you get that far along, it's pretty tough to do. So Dakota Francis steps away as the SCCAO winner at the 222-pound class with a 7-3 victory over Alex Bonsell of Aptos High School. A rare moment for Aptos High School. They didn't come out on top. So now we're coming with the big boys. Here come the heavy of the heavyweights. Alex Marquez of Aptos High School. He will be with the red anklet on and the dark singlet. And a, his opponent will be Alan Moreno from Harbor. He has the green slash and the green shoes and the green anklet. Six minutes of wrestling, three two-minute periods. Here we go. Now, Alan Marino from Harbor, he's, he's a 10th grader, and he is a big lad for 10th grader. He's got water skis yeah. for shoes. Yeah. He's, uh, he wears a size 17 shoe. Holy and, cow. And he's eight and six, eight and six on the season. Alex Marquez... <clears throat> Is 12 and 7 on the season, and uh, he was second at the El Camino. Marquez quickly gets uh, Marino in trouble. Marino's able to roll over, but Marquez picks up two points. It was a nice, more. nice trip. He took him right, took him right back, caught him off balance on his side there. Now he's going to work those ankles probably to break him down. Alex Marquez was second at the El Camino Classic, two and one at the Apple Cider Duels, and uh, he's a, play, also plays football, and he likes to wrestle koala bears. That's hard. Did you have to get up the tree first to get them? Yeah, you got it. They're nasty when you get up there, folks. Not the easiest one to wrestle. Inside a minute to go here in the first quarter. Marquez trying to pick up. The big man, and he actually does, gets Marino over on his side. No points are scored, but Marquez definitely showing control. Yes. That's a lot, lot of weight, a lot of weight to lift up. I'm not sure what their true body weight is, but I, I'd imagine they're in the 260 range anyway. Yeah, we say they're in the 287 pound weight class. That doesn't mean that they weigh 287 pounds. No. But uh, there's a couple of burgers on both of Marquez. Now gets Moreno in trouble, and he gets a pin with 17 seconds to go in the first period of play. Alex Marquez with the pin and the victory over the Harbor Pirate, Alan Moreno, and that is going to be a wrap-up here at the 2012-2013 SCCAL Wrestling Finals, and we're going to go through a, a quick thank you for our sponsors, and I'm going to come back to Pat for his final thoughts before we say goodnight here for the CTT, CTV Sports Special. Again, this 2012-2013 SCCAL champions have been sponsored by Dan Whiting and Whiting Foods, 613 Beach Street in Santa Cruz, and Steve Ribotero of Performance Foods, Ledger Foods, 1047 17th Avenue in Santa Cruz. Mary Young and Polar Bear Ice Cream, Great ice cream, folks. Got to go down there. 389 Coral Street in Santa Cruz. Kathy Wiley and Desperately Seeking Chocolate Dessert Sauce. You can find her on the web at dschocolate.com. Thank you. Winchester Auto Parts, Scotts Valley, 214A Mount Hermon Road in Scotts Valley. Anything <laughs> you need for your car, or truck, accessories, whatever. Also great to go to if you need some information on what you can do to your automobile. Again, Winchester Auto Parts in Scotts Valley. Cafe El Palomar, 2222 East Cliff Drive in Santa Cruz. Great location, great food, great drinks. 
go down, pay him a visit. You will not be disappointed. KP Construction and Ken Palestrini, he's the owner. Look him up. Great man if you need some construction done on your home. And Todd Kraft and the Kraft family at Kraft Body Shop. 6100 Soquel Avenue. Have a ding, have a dent, need something done to your car for the body? Go down to Kraft Body Shop. They'll get it done for you. And the San Lorenzo Valley High School Athletic Boosters Club. Thank you to all these sponsors for making this CTV sports presentation possible. Now, let's quickly back over to my Hall of Famer. 14 bouts, 28 wrestlers. What'd you come away with this this one from? Well, I think we got a good. We're gonna have we're gonna have a good showing. We're gonna see these guys see these guys go on to CCS next weekend, next Friday and Saturday. They'll be at CCS at Independence Independence High School next week. We're looking for big things out of them. Then I think they're they're very capable. A lot of our guys are, are very very capable, very get capable of, of placing in CCS. So I'm really happy for that and. Uh, congratulations to Aptos High School. I think this is their fourth or fifth uh, league championship in a row, and they're got a their big circle of, of people out there. And uh, I want to thank you know Mark Mercer and uh, Karen Van Putten, the the principal here at at San Lorenzo Valley High School, for hosting this. And and uh, they both have been a great job and such great supporters of of the wrestling here tonight. So. Um, Good luck, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens down the road. It'll be fun. Keep keep following these wrestlers. If you didn't get over to the CCS to see them on yourself, you can follow them in the paper at the Santa Cruz Sentinel or the Register Paharonian. For Pat Level, while Ryan Mulligan, who's going to have to put all this fun stuff together in a truck again. Thanks to him and CTV for coming here. I am Kurt Edwards from San Lorenzo Valley. This was the SCCAL Wrestling Championship. Good night, everybody, from SLV High School. Oh.